everybody from the Top Drawer RVA. It is Melissa hopping on. It is a bright and sunny, gorgeous day outside, Friday, and I am working on a little dresser, and I thought this was a good time for me to hop on and talk to you a little bit about blended fronts. So, welcome to my new followers. I did hit a milestone this week. I did hit 5,000 plus followers on my Facebook page at the Top Drawer RVA, which is super cool. It makes me very excited because um, it's been a very slow growth and I really want to, I don't know, make new friends, get more people watching me, saying hello. Hi, Cynthia. So today I am going to talk about all things blended, okay? So we've got a couple different things going on with this little chest. This is a custom order. This is something that was brought to me by a client um, wanting to paint it to match a previous item that I did paint for her. So I am working on her cute little pseudo lingerie chest. It's kind of tall and skinny, which always makes me feel like it's a, a, um, a lingerie chest. So let's see, more people are hopping on. Great, well then we will get started. So let me give you kind of like a little down low of what's happened with this piece so far. I have cleaned this piece very well with white lightning. Of course, white lightning is my go-to cleaning product. Um, it's really super cheap, you guys, and it's got a deglosser in it. So when you clean with white lightning, it's almost like it takes a little bit of your shine off your projects. So you're able to kind of get a, a better surface for your chalk mineral paint. Um, so if you haven't tried your, your white lightning yet, give it a try. It's in a, a little container. It's a powder form. I actually mix it up and put it in an old spray bottle. And then when it gets low, I redo it. Or if a piece is very dirty, I add new product to my spray bottle and blend it with warm water. And it just, it helps clean. It helps keep everything really clean and gets your projects ready for paint. I then filled drawer front holes because she is unsure yet. Um, what she wants to put on these pieces. Obviously, I'm gonna be re-drilling the hole for a single drawer pull here. She wants to do a, um, a beautiful vintage looking pull in the middle. So she's on, on the shop right now. She's ordering those and getting them ready for me. And then I will drill new holes and be able to um, insert the new hardware. But I wanted to show you how smooth this finish is. Can you even tell where I had those original holes on the piece? Dixie Bell Mud is my favorite filler for any holes, nicks, or scratches or gouges because you can sand it back almost completely flat. It's the only product that I've ever used that allows me to get that super flat surface and that fl flat surface then helps me when I'm applying my paint. I could always see those stinking holes before. They would drive me crazy because you would see these holes because your wood filler used to shrink. Um, the one that I used to use anytime. Hi, hello, how are you? So I have my glasses on so I can see your words. And um, when I'm painting, I'm gonna take them off because I'm an old lady and I can see better that far, but just not close up. <laughs> so bear with me for the on and off of the glasses. Um, I am available and I can answer all your questions. This is my page. I'm the boss of me, so go ahead, ask the questions. I'm all here for you. After I cleaned and filled holes, sanded back, I was ready for paint. I have done one coat on the drawer fronts of Dixie Belle's Vintage Duck Egg, okay? So Vintage Duck Egg is this gorgeous blue. You know what? It's almost one of those, those tones that has enough pigment to get away with one coat. There are pieces that I've done before. One coat is almost enough of Vintage Duck Egg. It's just one of those colors. There's like a handful of colors that Dixie Belle makes um, that are very highly pigmented and that cover almost in a one coat coverage and this is one of them. Um, a couple of the others are Aubergine, In the Navy, and Caviar. Those are the few that I use that, that really give me that one coat coverage. So the previous piece that I painted for this client had a blended drawer front, and I used Haint Blue for the blended drawer front. Haint Blue is almost white, but it's not. It's got a kind of little tint, a little baby blue peak coming through on this color. Okay, so I thought today, this is a good time for me to hop on here, hopefully not make too much of a mess because I just repainted my whole dining room walls <laughs> because of the amount of paint that I get on these, on these walls from painting inside my house. But guess what? I'm not gonna paint outside, it's too cold. Can't do it, I'm gonna be a baby and paint in my house. If it means I repaint my walls every once in a while, so be it. All right, glasses are off, I'm on my little wheelie stool and I've got my supplies needed to do a blended front. When you are blending paint, 
You have a couple different ways to do this and I'm only teaching you the way that works best for me, okay? I like to do one full coat of the base color. A blended front on a dresser door or drawer is kind of one of those things that you're gonna learn the best way for you. Some people go in and add that middle color in the beginning, I don't see the need to. It's a very subtle effect and it's a very light effect. So this has been painted with one coat of Dixie Bell's Vintage Duck Egg, okay? You're going to need two brushes, one for each color. My favorite brush is the flat medium. A flat medium is light. I paint every day, you guys know I paint way too much. It's absurd the amount of paint that I, that I do, <laughs> but it is what it is. I, I actually love it, so it's not a bad thing, but I can whip out a project in a day, usually. So, and Dixie Bell Paint helps with that too because it is um, fast drying. It really helps with, you know, application. You don't have to wait too long in between your coats, okay? So here we go. One coat of Vintage Duck Egg, and paint is now on my hands. This is why I wear an apron. One coat of Vintage Duck Egg has been applied to this drawer front. I have started painting the sides, but all I need is this to show you how to do it, all right? So, when I'm coming in, I'm going to keep a damp brush. You saw me spraying my brush. I'm not going to spray this drawer because I don't want the drips to run down. A blended front is just in the middle. I'm gonna take my original color, Vintage Duck Egg, I'm gonna go back around the edges of my drawer. If you feel your brush dragging, spray it again. By spraying your brushes, you are getting less brush strokes on your completed finish. You are getting a longer range and wear to your paint. You're going to use less paint because your paint is thinned out and because your first coat covered 99% of your wood, you're not needing a full second thick coat on the second coat. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I spray my brushes. It just allows you to use less paint, have less brush strokes, and achieve the finish that you're looking for, okay? For me, it's a smooth finish. Okay, I have now outlined kind of like a box, okay? A box to my piece. I'm gonna come in and just put a little bit more here. And now, I'm gonna go in with my second brush, dampened second brush, same one. This is my medium flat. And I'm gonna dip it into the haint blue, okay? Here we go. I might talk less. When I concentrate, I can't talk as much. So, watch. <laughs> I'm going to touch the middle of my drawer. And I see a little fuzzy puppy dog hair in there. Let me get that off before we continue. I think I got it. It's gone. Okay, so I am going to paint a small little middle stripe. That's all I'm gonna do right now. Paint blue, vintage duck egg. I'm going back to my vintage duck egg with my dampened brush. Not too crazy damp, okay? Just a little bit damp. You don't want it dripping and ruining the finish that you're doing. I'm gonna come back in and I'm going to start to pull these two colors together. This is a very subtle blend, okay? Now the entire front of my drawer is wet. You can still see that lighter tone here in the middle. This is where I'm gonna add more to it. I'm gonna go back with my haint blue, back with the tiny little dip of my brush. I'm gonna dampen it and I'm gonna come back in the middle. I did not get that puppy dog hair. Let's get you off of there. How am I gonna do this? Is it gone? Got it, got it. I have two dogs in my house, so. So, my front is wet. I'm back with my haint blue brush and I'm just depositing a little bit more color into the middle of the drawer. Don't worry about this on the side. There's ways to fix that and I'm gonna show you. I'm just making sure it's a nice, ombre blend. Back to Vintage Duck Egg if you find that you've made a little boo-boo and you've got an easy fix. All you're doing is keeping your brush a light hand in the direction, the same direction, and voila, you have now one blended front. It's hard to tell right now when it's wet, okay? Let me put these brushes down. When it's wet, it's more difficult to see 
the amount of blend, okay? Because the paint is lighter when it's wet. When this dries, you're gonna see it a lot more. So I'm gonna push it in so that you can keep looking at that, all right? And we're gonna come down here. Remember the hardware is gonna be in the center. A blended front is just giving you almost like a picture frame for your hardware, okay? I'm gonna put my glasses back on so I can see if there's any comments or questions. Nothing yet, I'm not seeing anything. Don't forget to ask me. And if I miss a question, I'll go back in when I'm done um, and answer any questions I missed, okay? So, back to it. Here we go. I'll do another drawer so that you can see. I'm going to go back to my vintage duck egg. Remember, original color goes on first. One coat has been applied to this drawer front. I'm going to go back in and cover all my edges. I'm making almost like a square box around where my blended front will be. Another word for blended front is ombre. Some people call it ombre. I only call things ombre usually when um, there's more than two colors. This is a simple way for you to achieve a gorgeous custom look, really pretty for the hardware in an easy fashion, okay? So I've got my box. I painted my, my wet box of vintage duck egg with my dampened brush. And now I'm gonna go back to my haint blue. Haint blue is the color that I'm using in the center. My dampened brush, and I'm gonna go straight in this line. Remember? Right there, okay? I'm, I'm gonna blend it. You can do it whatever way it feels more comfy to you. Um, you can go back to the vintage duck egg, back and forth, back and forth. Usually twice is, is all you need. You can just go across this way, I'm just making sure all of my drawers now going to be wet with paint, if that makes sense, because when it's wet, it's just more movable. It's just an easier job for you. I think I need a little bit more paint blue on here. And yes, this seems like a lot of water, but it's really not, you guys. This is a, um, a misting bottle. I'm gonna shoot it, see if you can see the stream. See how far it goes? Like four feet. But it's um, it's a fine mist. Okay, remember I like to go, oh look, another puppy dog hair. That's it, I should banish them. Banish them forever. <laughs> I can't, my house is full of hair. Hair and kids and dogs. All right, dampen brush. I'm just gonna drag this across. Okay, I want a nice blendy front. So right now, remember, I'm just making that whole drawer front wet. I want it to be smooth and now I'm going to go back to my paint blue okay slight little dip not even a, not even a dip just like a barely a touch into my paint damp brush keep an eye on how much you're using because remember you you want these drawers to match you want them to look uniform you don't want to get crazy and have one be much more blended than the other all right so I'm just gonna go back again, right over top, pulling those two colors together. Remember, if you feel like there's too much on one side, this whole drawer is wet, you're able to pull it across. There you go, drawer number two is now finished. What do you think? It's not hard, right? You can do this. This is an easy way to really, really dress up a piece. I can see in the reflection in the camera, it's looking a little bit more harsh than it really is, but it's not. When I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this straight on, and remember this is a dry yet, the blend is gonna be super, super good. So that is all you need to do for blended fronts. It's not hard. It's an easy, easy, simple way to use two colors, very close in the color family. That's the next thing I'd recommend is that you make sure to keep your, your two tones very similar. Um, it just helps pull the colors together when they are a similar tone. Like if you had, say, aubergine, I would use Lucky Lavender. If you had In the Navy, I would use Dusty Blue as my highlight. Just that one kind of tone off of the original color is enough to pull these together and make this gorgeous front. You can see the difference because this is not blended. This one here is not blended, and this one is. It really just gives it a nice little, a little pop, a little depth, because this piece will not be distressed. Um, this will be sealed with a satin clear coat, 
and I will be drilling new holes for the hardware, but the hardware is going to sit right here in the middle. And when you look at that beautiful hardware, it's just going to be highlighted and gorgeous and pretty and all of the things. So as this dries, you're going to see less and less of a difference in the color, in the tones. But that's all you need to do a blended drawer front. What do you think? <laughs> Any questions for me? Great tutorial. I'm glad you like it. You know, the key to um, doing this simply and easily is a spray misting bottle, two brushes, okay, and like-minded colors, not too far off from each other. Remember, we've got paint blue and we've got vintage duck egg, which when you look at them together as paint tones, they're really close. They're really close in color, okay? This is what's going to save you time and make it easier. Don't pick black and white. That's gonna be a giant pain in the butt. <laughs> Don't do it. Pick something that's similar tones, similar colors, makes the blending really easy. You can start to see this, this is drying here now. You can re really see how these two colors come together um, and highlight and dry. It's just, it's a pretty way to make a pretty dresser, all right? Try it, try it first, Vicki. You never know until you try, all right? Practice on something. And here's another tip. I don't need to blend the sides of this. I mean, I bet you back in the day I would have. I would have sat on the floor and blended the sides and it's a big surface and I'm gonna fight with it because it's gonna dry. That's just making yourself have more work. Learn to work smarter, not harder, because the size of this can be a solid vintage duck egg. You're only gonna see the fronts. And by highlighting the front of all of these drawers, making them all cohesive and look the same, um, they're just gonna look super good. Super, super good. I'm really excited. So, quick little recap for anybody who is jumping on late and didn't miss or miss the front of this video. Entire piece was cleaned with White Lightning. Um, White Lightning is a great cleaner, TSP based and a deglosser for your projects. After it was cleaned, I then sprayed it with water and wiped down that white lightning because you don't want to leave it on your surface. It's not sticky, you wouldn't feel it, but it could interfere with your paint if you don't rinse it properly. I then sanded this entire piece lightly. Number one, because I already had my sander out to um, remove the, Vix the uh, Dixie Belle mud that I had on the front of these drawers. I always, If my sander's in my hand, you know what guys? I, of course the paint says no prep needed. But guess what, I, I wanna prep. I wanna do this the way that I know when it goes to somebody's house, it's gonna last and stand the test of time. If my sander is in my hand and I'm sanding these fronts to make sure that the Dixie Belle mud is smooth, why not sand the entire thing? Just give yourself that extra little insurance, okay? It, it's not necessary, no it's not needed, but should you do it? Probably. Every piece that I have is usually a sand scuff, and I'm not talking getting in there removing all your varnish. I'm just talking, take your sander, do, 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 all the way down the side, wipe it down. You've given it a little rough up, a little tooth for your paint to grab onto, um, and you are good to go. So, clean with white lightning, Dixie Belle mud to fill the holes. Two colors needed, that's all you need for this little ombre effect, this little blended front, vintage duck egg, paint blue, two brushes, and a mister. That's not a lot of stuff. That's, that's keeping it pretty painless painting over here. Pretty simple. When this does dry, I can then come in and do my clear coat. You don't have to clear coat. You could leave it as is. You could use wax. You could use whatever you like to finish your projects. Because I'm not going to be distressing this, I like a clear coat finish to seal my paint. And uh, yeah, that is it. This is what I'm gonna do today. Sit here, blend some drawer fronts. I added this little keyhole mold. Um, she actually had a metal one here that was matching the Batwing hardware. She did not like it. I removed it. This is an IOD mold, which stands for Iron Orchid Designs. Um, they are a company that you can purchase um, a silicone mold, use resin to make molds. I literally have 50 of these. I just sit on the floor one day and just make as many as I can. So when I need them, they're made and they're there. I lightly sanded the back of it, applied it with wood glue, taped it to the front, and now that it's drying, you can paint right over top of it. So she's gonna have a fancy pants little keyhole. She's gonna have new hardware. It's gonna be a cutie, all right? So if you have any questions, send me a message. I'm always uh, always up on my social media answering questions. You can order any of these products that you need 
in the little link above my head. That is my affiliate link, okay? So an affiliate link means that uh, I do get a small kickback from your purchase and that lets me keep bringing you tutorials and how-tos and fancy pants videos on YouTube and IGTV and TikTok. I'm freaking loving some TikTok. I'm an old lady and I love TikTok. <laughs> it's funny, you know, TikTok is one of those things that um, you can make it work for you. It's, it's interesting. I talk about it a little bit in my creative coaching um, group. I do have a private group, uh, which is a private creative coaching group, a mentoring group for artists. And we talk a lot about social media because I'm all about social media. Social media is the biggest tool that you have as an artist to brand yourself and make your small business be a big business. All right. Um, TikTok is one of those things I joined because my son told me to. And he's 20 and he seems to know what's hip and cool and, you know, hot with the kids. <laughs> so I joined and I was like, this is a, a crazy thing. It's a load of... Um, dancing people and I'm never going to do that. He's like, no mom, for your before and after pictures. All of a sudden I have another tool to uh, take videos and do before and afters with music and post them all over my social media. And they're so fun. I love it. I love it. So uh, anyways, if you also have any questions about my creative coaching group, you can also send me a message. I do talk all about it on my blog. You can follow me at www.thetopdrawerrva.com. I do have a blog post on there talking all about creative coaching and mentoring and um, helping you grow your social media. All right, I'm not going to chat your ear off. I think that's it for me. I'm going to sit on the floor, get covered in paint. Look, there's paint on me already, even though I'm wearing an apron. It is what it is. Every, it's it's going to be a fashion statement. Paint on the clothes should be a fashion statement. <laughs> I'm going to sit here, hang out, and paint. If you want to paint with me and you want to paint these colors, go ahead and clickety-click that link above my head and grab some because that's just two colors. That's under $20 worth of paint right there. And I'm going to use less than a quarter of my jar for this entire piece. Dixie Bell paint, little EOS jar, covers an insane amount of square footage, okay? Which is why you're also wetting your paint on the second coat to take it even further. All right? That's it for me. Hope everybody has a great day. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy Friday, y'all. And I will be back in, who knows what I'll be painting. It's an adventure every day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.